Hi and welcome back. Today I'm focusing on Labster in this brief video discussing how it might be integrated within Canvas. So Labster is specifically designed for classes that traditionally have a physical lab such as a science course. So let's dive in right now and take a look at how you set up Labster for your class and some opportunities to see how it looks in a classroom setting. Okay, so let's take a brief look at Labster. And I wanted to say that if you are a science faculty teaching a lab class, very likely this is already integrated in your class and you're using it and you're more of an expert on it than I am. But I wanted to mention this just in case some of you out there were thinking about using Labster or had some interest in maybe um, adopting it in a future quarter, because one of the things we can learn from our virtual experiences going through COVID-19 and in, uh, adapting to enhanced virtual education and new forms of DE education is that some of the uh, teaching strategies we develop during this time, which is an unfortunate time, nonetheless could be implemented in the future for higher quality distance or virtual instruction. So I just wanted to make that point because certainly Labster has a lot of potential and I've already heard some great things from some of our science faculty about its integration. So to get started with Labster, you already have the possibility in your class, uh, Trevor has Labster loaded into your class. So as you know by now, if you need to pull up the Labster dashboard, just go to your settings page and click on navigation. And you just want to make sure that Labster is at the top. And like any of the other applications you might be using, such as Proctorio, if it's up at the top here, it'll be active in your course navigation menu. Always hit save at the bottom when you make any changes either to the order or whether or not items are at the top visible or invisible at the bottom below this line. So the dashboard itself is available then on your course. And right now this particular class doesn't have students loaded into it so it's not showing my data. But the main thing is I want to make sure that that tab is in my class. The second thing I will need, and this is available as a um, handout which I could email to you. It's a very detailed uh, handout called Add Labster Simulations to Your Canvas Course. It goes through all the various steps and we'll go through some of these today so you don't necessarily need this handout. Then what you will need is a file that has one or more simulations in it. And the simulations you could actually get all of the simulations and as you can see there are I think currently over 141 of them, quite a few. And these could range from a variety of, of topics. And you might be thinking, well, I don't teach biology and um, I teach nutrition, so could I use it? Well, you could actually go through and look at, you could uh, search for a keyword, like you could type in nutrition. And then you might get an entire set of simulations that relate to that particular area. And actually, I was just looking at this, so you won't really need that URL that I provided if you want to upload any of the labs. Just go to labster.com and click on resources, so that's a second click, and then click on at the bottom faculty resources. And this is then where you will find that listing of all the simulations. So these have all the simulations listed, and as I was saying before, you could figure out which of these you wanted to use. So again, once I have the Labster dashboard in my class, then all I would need to do is import content into my class. So really two major steps here, and they're, they're pretty easy. The first is I want to navigate to Settings and click on the Apps tab. So if I'm in another like navigation, I click on Apps. And I'll be interested right in this area here, specifically Import Course Content. That's what I want to click on. Once I click on that, and this is all explained in that guide. If you're interested in that PDF, let me know and I'll send it to you. What I want to choose is the common cartridge package right here. Okay, so that's the one you choose from this long list. As long as you get that one, you'll be in good shape. Then what I'll do is I will go back to Labster and I then want to see, well, what exactly do I want for my course? And let me just pick one that maybe is a little smaller for the sake of brevities. And so I'll just pick uh, general biology, one and two, and we'll just do core simulations. So I'll click on that and then it downloads a file. And let's just find that file. 
it's going to be wherever your zip files get saved. And so that is right here. Now, one thing I want to point out here is you do not have to and shouldn't, uh, do not um, open up the zip file and decompress it. You'll find these files in there. You actually want to import it right as it is as a zip file. So don't change the extension from .zip and don't um, do anything as far as opening it up. So that that's it. I have my simulations there and then I'll just go back to my Canvas class. Keep in mind I'm going to my import content area and I will then choose my file and on my desktop I'll find the name CC Labster. You always know it has Labster in it. I'll hit open on that and then on this one, I'm going to just say for the moment, all content. If I choose specific content, I could get a little more specific about what I want to um, bring in. But I'm going to bring these all in. And no problem with this. I mean, certainly you have room in your Canvas shell. And I'll show you in just a second how you can maximize um, the organization of your Labster content. So click import right here. Now, by default, at this stage, it will bring this in. Um, into your assignments and you can see it's running here. If it's uh, fairly large it could take a while and just to see the size of this it's 115 K it's actually really small file size. So that's being brought into the program. Now I can go back to home and I will find all of my Labster imported content under assignments and they are categorized as assignments so that's where you will find them. And they will be categorized according to this tab here called simulations and you can see all the various simulations that have popped up here. I can then at any point click on these and it has the main information just some screenshots it tells you what the assignment is it tells you the learning objectives and it then um, gives you basically the description of it. You can go into assignment settings as you could in any other case and this is a uh, key here, this external tool is what takes it to that simulation. Since that's already loaded into your class, you don't have to mess with it, but this is an indication that it will take students externally to the Labster content. You could go in and change the points, you could change the assignment group, call it whatever you want, and so forth. And you could do all the typical settings you would on an assignment. So the assignment then is built in with the learning objectives and that will is what we're going to see when we go to the external window. So let's just do that. Let's load this into a new window. And at this point I could uh, restart it from the beginning or choose from the saved game. And if you just load it for the first time, depending on the size of the simulation, it can actually take a while. So don't um, get concerned if this is taking more than you know, even a couple of minutes and you might want to indicate to your students that this could take a while for the simulation to load up. Okay, then we have the indication. We're at 100%. We can start the simulation on acids and bases. This is obviously for chemistry. Before we go into the lab, let's look back to find out what brought you here in the first place. Would you like to go to catch some fresh air and learn why you are here? Okay, so what you'll discover in the progress of working through any of the Labster lab simulations is tabs here where you can choose um, media, perhaps um, the mission, the theory behind it, and then of course um, from the home screen you can interact. So if you want to, our story starts with a barbecue at your friend's place. You could go to. Uh, we're teleported to this location. While eating your burger, you overhear a conversation. No burger for me. I'll eat a salad because I am trying to reduce the acidity of my body. I would have said that vegetables are rather acidic. In fact. I remember that tomatoes have a pH of around 4. And sure one of the things you can do with your mouse yes, is sure. you can move around I'm in the virtual no environment. Thing. Maybe there are different definitions of acidity and alkalinity. I would love to go to a lab and find out. Let's do this in the lab on the Labster campus. Added in Beijing, we're debating about food acidity and alkalinity. Well, those had some interesting points there. Do you know the answer to their question? Which of the following statements sounds correct to you? In 
interesting guess. I wonder how the discussion would have gone if you had participated. Would you be able to support your arguments with scientific evidence? Let's go to the lab and learn more about acids and bases. Interact with one other thing you're, you're noting there is there's a little bit um, with the voices in some cases. Before you can enter the lab, you need to wear a lab cloud. Find the lockers and open one of them. Okay. I was just going to say here before I get my uh, lab coat that in some cases there are... Um, I've noticed just a few issues with the voices and the voice will cut off um, or you'll lose the end of a text string before it goes on to the next um, space. And the other thing is the voice at times I think can sound a little mechanical. But um, again, for having a virtual lab simulation, lab it's pretty good. So Find we can get our lab coat and, pick it up. and click on the holo table to go play a game. Okay, and then we can go to the holo table and play a game. Identify a water molecule and click on it. Okay, so let's go back actually. And at any point you can hit your escape key and then you can you'll be able to, to leave the uh, simulation. So I'm not going to go through extensively and, and show you all the labs obviously, but just wanted to show you an example of what a Labster lab is like. And again, if you're interested in it, it's available to any of us who might be interested. You of course, if you're not teaching um, a lab science class, maybe wouldn't want to use it. But as I said before, you might be teaching nutrition or anthropology or a discipline where there could actually be some content that might be useful for your class. So if you want to check that out, um, again, you can go to labster.com, look at the simulations. You could also uh, reach out to me and I would be happy to provide you with the tutorial manual that will get you started and show you the URL to find the simulations. And then if you have any issues, I'd be happy to help you uh, talk about how to load uh, Labster Labs um, into your Canvas shell if you're interested in using some of that content. So I think it's pretty cool. It's a great opportunity for our students who want a lab component in these times in which our uh, physical campus has closed and we're using these virtual uh, methods to teach some of our lab science to our students. So um, reach out if you have any questions for sure about Labster. So thanks for listening today. This was a focus on Labster and its use in Canvas. Hopefully, if you're in one of the disciplines that needs this resource in Canvas, it will be an effective tool to use in your DE class.